This is the second generation of my evolutionary simulation. The old version had several shortcomings, but the biggest one was probably that all agents were independent and had no way of interacting with each other. In contrast, social behavior and group dynamics is the primary focus of the new simulation. Here is the simulation in action. The agents are now small bots with wheels, and like before they are left to move in an environment that contains food. I usually keep the food layer hidden for efficiency reasons, but it is essentially a grid of food that can be consumed and slowly regenerates. Another difference is that the bots cannot choose to become carnivores, and use other bots as an alternate source of food. They can do this by extending a spike in front of them and running quickly into another bot. This takes away some amount of life from the target bot and gives it to the hunting bot. The faster the collision happens, and the more the spike is extended, the more life is transferred in this way. Every collision is drawn as a little blood splash. My last simulation used recurrent spiking neural networks to model the brain of every organism. However, since then I found that multilayer perceptron model gave much better results. At the end, the best results were obtained by using a multilayer perceptron with one hidden layer that is allowed to form recurrent connections. You can see the neural network of some selected bot on the bottom left. Here are the input-output conventions for all bots. There is a total of 12 input neurons. Every bot has two eyes and every eye has four sensors. The proximity sensor and three sensors for the three colors red, green and blue. In addition, there is a food sensor that responds when there is food in front of the bot, a sound sensor that responds to the total velocity of bots around the spot, a smell sensor that responds to the total number of bots around the spot, and finally a health neuron that responds when the bot is healthy. These inputs are fed into the hidden layer whose size and connectivity can vary, but is usually around 6 to 20 neurons, and roughly 2 to 6 inputs per neuron. Lastly, there are 6 outputs. Three neurons control the amount of red, green, and blue that this bot should turn. Two neurons control wheel 1 and wheel 2 speed. And the last neuron controls the length of the spike. Some amount of bots is then created at random and left to evolve. You are currently looking at the earliest phase of the evolution, where bots with random brains are spawned. The bots right now reproduce asexually every couple of simulation ticks. The purpose of the simulation is not to get any particular behavior, but rather simply observe free evolution without any influence. Loosely speaking, bots that are good at surviving in this environment with limited resources will live longer and make more babies. The interesting part, however, is that just like in the real world, there is no clearly defined fitness function because the survival strategy of every bot is heavily influenced by other currently living bots and their strategies. Here are some interesting bots that I observed during the period of about a week. The ability to locate and kill other bots evolves fairly often. For example, the blue bot on top of this video is very efficient at this task. Unfortunately, it is just as good at killing its own kin, so eventually this bot is driven to extinction by itself. The red bot on the bottom right of this video developed an interesting strategy for killing other bots. It turns around on spot until it sees some enemy and then dashes forward to kill it. Unfortunately, it also likes to feast on its own babies and is eventually driven to extinction. In this case, the bots find it useful to stick together and form large trains. The bot in the front steers towards color targets, and when one is found, they all take turns hurting it a little and distribute the food over part of the chain. These bots are aggressive mainly towards colored targets, but still don't mind hurting each other on occasion. But at least they don't fight each other to death, allowing them to survive fairly long. The same bots in this example started out as reasonably efficient hunters, and later on also evolved a way to avoid each other by taking a sharp turn when they saw something green and blue. This proved to be a very efficient strategy, and a couple of generations later, the bots took over the entire environment. Avoiding each other also proved to be an effective strategy because it leads to bots being distributed uniformly across the entire map, eating all food. Later on in the evolution, however, I observed that the hunting and steering ability was gradually lost through mutations because it was not needed anymore for survival. And because I periodically insert new random bots into the environment, eventually a couple of red bots became able to hunt them down and slowly the entire species died out. In the end, one theme always emerged. In the long run, even if the ability to get food effectively is extremely beneficial for an individual, the species that did not kill its own kin was always the one that was selected for overall. This most likely, at least partially, explains our extremely strong protectiveness of small children. If we did not have these feelings, we would not be here.